Taking action for you. This morning on TV20 Detroit starts right now. What's happening in entertainment? From Tinseltown to the Big Apple, this is your weekly entertainment magazine with Greg Dunmore of PulseBeat.tv. Pulse of a new generation. PulseBeat.tv. Welcome to another edition of PulseBeat with Greg Dunmore. We like to underscore in this show the importance of dreams coming true, and there's no place that symbolizes the reality of dreams coming true more so than Motown. And we're standing in front of the Motown Museum in Detroit on West Grand Boulevard, where we know all roads lead back to Motown. And two artists that symbolize dreams coming true, Motown's iconic arranger Paul Reiser and the musical magnificence of vocalist Mesa. Stay tuned. Are you sure? Are you ready for Mesa? Yeah. All right. So they ready. Oh, God, I can't. Thank you. Thank you, babe. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> This old song is about a man that I wanted that I couldn't have. <laughs> An ex-friend of mine introduced me to this man over the phone, and I spoke to him for seven weeks. Got all excited and was going to Las Vegas to meet him and found out the day I was leaving that he was married. Child. Mm, mm, mm. But instead of getting depressed and eating more cookies, I decided to write a song. They played it so much on the radio, I made a lot of money and bought myself this diamond right here. Sure did. This one right here. Take over my mind. I surrender to the rush of your time. So incredible, your control over me. I can't resist no matter how I've tried. Your love has got me hypnotized. Oh, closer and closer. Detroit has had a love affair with you for a very long time, but of course the city gets older and you get younger. <laughs> but if somebody was to ask you, what is this love affair that you and Detroit have had and can you kind of let us know maybe where it stems from? It stems from the first time I came here with Incognito back in 1992, 93. First shows we did here uh, was at the Fox, I believe, and just the reaction from the audience was amazing. Uh, with the love of Incognito and and for me to come here and sing Deep Waters here in, in, in the states and especially in Detroit, because um, it was a big deal for Incognito to come here. We knew that this was the music mecca, and so when you come to those kind of places, you want to make sure that you do the, your best because you want the people to love you, especially here. And so that's why uh, it was so special. And now Detroit, for the last 33 years, has been it's been my second home because they everybody here just treats me like a princess. Wow, mm -hmm. with good reason. 
Now, I interviewed Nancy Wilson and she said, and I called her a jazz singer, she says, well, I don't consider myself to be a jazz singer. And she said, they put this jazz on me. My love has no beginning, my love has no end. No front or back, my love won't bend, I'm in the middle. Lost in a spin, loving you. And you don't know, you don't know, you don't know, you don't know how glad I am. And I know that your son's name is Jazz, so I know you have this jazz connection. But how do you define yourself as a vocalist? I'm a jazz funk and soul singer. That's how I think. Um, I've always wanted to do that. That's what my my passion was from a little girl, listening to Shaka Khan and Rufus and, and you know all those bands back in the day. what I wanted to sing. I wanted to have the variation of, of and the choice to sing all three and to put them together is the way I, I want it to be. Now this show that you're doing this evening is sort of a narrative I was told from mm -hmm. point A to point B to yeah. point C so I'm going to ask you just briefly to say point A will be and then where are we right now in terms of where the I'm going to call you the legendary Macy is right now. Uh, well, I started out singing background for Stevie Wonder. Um, that was my first professional gig after leaving. Me. For the last 33 years, I've been coming to Detroit. A long time, isn't it? Both of y'all were little babies there. Uh huh. Back in 1990, what, 91? my last year at Morgan State University. Stevie Wonder came to town with one of my best friends. She was already singing background for him, and she asked him if I could audition. So I auditioned that day and passed the audition, but I asked Stevie if I could finish my degree. I had one year left. All of my friends thought I was crazy as hell. They was like, how are you gonna tell Stevie Wonder what you gonna do? But he was so sweet about it. He said, yeah, Mason, come out of here next year. I'll have something for you to do. So the next year when I graduated, I joined Wonder Love. Now can't reveal the mystery of tomorrow. But in passing, we'll grow older every day. Just as all that's born is new. You know what I say is true. first professional gig was singing background on the song These Three Words from the Spike Lee movie, Jungle Fever. But one of those songs on that album, that soundtrack album, kind of jumped in my heart during the pandemic. <laughs> Where my kitchen karaoke family? Oh, there you go. Well, one of y'all kitchen karaoke brothers tried to step to a sister during the pandemic, and uh, I spoke to this man for six months on the phone, day in and day out. He met my family over the phone. I met his family over the phone. We were waiting for the vaccine so we could go on our first date. Well, the vaccine happened, but they did not. And it kind of made me a little sad, because you know, up in that point, I'd been by myself about 10 years at that time. So I was ready to give somebody a chance, and he messed the thing up. Yeah, wait. So I figured, you know, the next man that steps to me, I want him to make sure he's sure. So I recorded this song.
music's ways and your lips are so The excitement is going to continue. Stay tuned. You're watching PulseBeat.tv. What's happening in entertainment with Greg Dunmore of PulseBeat.tv. Don't you just love Mesa? And guess what? We love her even more because she gave us a gift bag. Music for your soul. Let's see what's in it. Ooh, uh, a CD. Music for your soul. And something else. Ooh, something that's gonna make your car smell really great. Something scented with her picture. And more Mesa. Mm, love you, Mesa. Don't you stop it. Don't you stop and stop the music. You don't really wanna stop. Uh -huh. Don't you stop it. Don't you stop, stop the music. You don't really wanna stop. Don't you know you got me mesmerized? With the beat, I'm always satisfied. Don't stop the music, cause it tends to groove. Uh, don't you feel you wanna move? Uh, come on now. I just wanna run. My music is uh, something I, I I work very hard at making sure that it's music that will last for a long time. Uh, I want to make sure that generations can come back to my music and appreciate it. So I work very hard at that. I don't do gimmicks and I don't try to, you know, try to be somebody I'm not. So I just always stay true to who I'm true to myself. And I think that's why I've had this longevity so long. Can you tell us something that is upcoming that we love our scoop so can you say something maybe that our audience will be among the first to hear something that's in the works or something yeah. that let us know what that might be or what that is. Well um, as soon as I get the blessing from her estate I'm um, doing a, a Phyllis Hyman tribute album. And I'm really excited about it. We're going to do it full on with orchestra, and the first show will be with orchestra, hopefully from Philadelphia or Pittsburgh. And we'll see where we can go with that. I think I just want an honest, loving tribute to her about her music. No drama, no going deep into her past and to her life, into her personal life. We're not doing that. It's all about the music and the love for Phyllis Hyman's voice and her legacy. Now, you are an international name. We know you live sometime in London and incognito. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that the European audience is compared to the American audience? Is there a big difference? Is there a Josephine Baker thing that went on in London that didn't happen here or what? Um, I, I think in the beginning it was. Um, in the beginning when I started with Incognito, it was all about, you know, we were at the same time as the Millie Vanilli phrase, phase and all that stuff. That's what was going on then. But, uh, and I kind of had a hard time um, with that. There was, a, the, well, I was told that the reason why we didn't do a video for Deep Waters is because they didn't think I had the right look. And so therefore we had to deal with that kind of stuff, even though the song is now a big hit without me doing a video, but I was doing a video. So um, that was the early part of my career, living through that. Um, but somehow surviving it and getting to the point where in Europe, they didn't care what you look like. They didn't care, they just wanted the music. They loved the soul of the music. And um, that's, what, what, that's what sustained the music back then. So now, um, in this country, I think we're getting back to that now. I think a lot of people, uh, because of the advent of social media, you're able to, to discover real people who are doing soulful music and not trying to just be like everybody else. So is there a song that you would hope would be or that you consider to be your signature song, whether we consider it to be your signature <laughs> song or not? It's definitely Deep Waters. 
That's the song that everybody knows me by, and that has sustained my career this whole time for three decades. Uh, and still, people still love to hear it. So that means that it's, it's, it should be Thomas at this point, and I hope it will be. I saw the signs, I read the book. I should have had a second look. Cause boy, you caught me dreaming. And there were times you'd come around and we'd agree just to be friends. Tell me who was fooling. Deep waters, I'm drowning in. Entertainment with Greg Dunmore of PulseBeat.tv. If you like what we're doing, please tell a friend. Or if you want to see what we've done again, go to PulseBeatGlobal.com. That's P U L S E B E A T G L O B A L dot com. You can also go to our PulseBeat TV YouTube channel and you can revisit what we're doing. And once again, you can tell everybody that. We're doing something that is so exciting that they wouldn't want to miss it. Remember PostBeatGlobal.com or the YouTube channel PostBeat TV. Thanks for telling the world about it. PostBeat. Some names are really worthy of being household names, and there is no name more worthy than being a household name than the magnificent Motown arranger. Mr. Paul Reiser. Happy birthday! Oh, I was shocked. Honestly, I had first time in my life I ever had a, a real party. A real party. Yeah. It is often said, will there be another Stevie Wonder? Will there be, who will be the next Stevie Wonder? Will be there, uh, who will be the next Michael Jackson? Who will be the next Marvin Gaye? The question is, will there ever be another Paul Reiser? Well, my son in name, <laughs> okay, but that's all. God created us as, as, as unique as his uh, fingerprints, you know. Everybody, their gifts, their spiritual gifts are all unique and uh, I think there's be, there'll never be another Stevie, never be another Marvin, and never be another me. Okay, never. Which is, uh, we have to, we have to find our spiritual great gifts. Some people go through life and never discover their gifts, but we all have them. God gives every single of His children, every single one, a spiritual gift, but we have to be. In, in, uh, introspective and, and discerning enough to know when to hold them and when to fold them, as, a, as the gamma said. You know? There was no greater arranger in the history of Motown than Paul Reiser. Paul Reiser is a Grammy winning arranger. So he has his Grammys for it, so everyone knows that he is the best of the best. He just did um, Kim, the singer Kim, he just did some new songs on Kim's new album. So he's still working, he's still sought after. He's been doing stuff with Big Sean and things like that. So he's sought after. Everyone knows that Paul Reiser is that deal. And like I said, I'm just so excited that he's getting his flowers. What makes him historical is that he being a part of the Motown sound and being a very integral part of what gave the Motown sound that style, you know. Um, you know, strings, horns, orchestration, arrangements. I've got so much honey, the bees in the me. Uh, you know, those things and also writing amazing songs such as like, you know, what becomes of the brokenhearted, and you know, I don't know why I love you, working with Stevie and people like that. Um, what makes him relevant is because even after Motown, he was working with, you know, acts like Ashford and Simpson. Now it's solid. Solid as a rock. He's still Stevie Wonder, 
we just did Kim, uh, Kim's new record, um, Live Out Your Love, and I can't remember the next one, um, in the actual Motown studio. So he's still, he's still working. And plus me as an arranger and being his copyist, I'm still working. So as long as, as I've got breath in my body, I'm carrying on the legacy of Paul Reiser as best as possible. You know, of course, you got, you know, the break in oh my, my girl, but it is, which is, you know, that's a part that was written by Paul. Well, I guess you say what can make me feel this way, my girl. know that you have always maintained a level of being relevant and current working with many new artists so your opinion of the state of music today as compared to when you started in what may have been called the good old days I don't know well uh, when I when I started uh, songs had great music they had great lyrics they used uh, uh, not a lot of gimmicks electronic gimmicks real musicians Real people in the studios, where, where we captured those spirits of those people, see. And uh, uh, um, nowadays, uh, music is kind of, the, it, it, it's, um, I guess you call it disposable music. They don't do them to last uh, into generations. They just do them for, to make money in the present. And I think it's a big mistake. They're making money, but it's like flash in the pan money. There is a certain artistry and skill set that comes from being a great arranger. And I just wonder, is the art and the skill of being a great arranger, is that being taught today? Is there any way that a younger person is being trained today to be what you have historically proven um, makes a person great as an arranger. As a ranger's goal, a bookkeeper can be an arranger, a, a, a ditch digger can be an arranger. It's about hearing things. Everybody hears something, ideas, but can they transmit those ideas? See, uh, I'm, a, I'm what you call an orchestrator arranger. Big difference, okay? But uh, many, many uh, producers can be arrangers, they have ideas. An arranger is somebody who takes a, a, a specific idea and rearranges it. You know, and many, many people can do that. They have that gift. But as far as arrangers go, uh, nobody has my gift. I don't have anybody else's gift. And I know how to apply my gift. And most people don't. See, that's, the way, that's just the way it goes. You have to know how to apply it. See? Now, you've had a very long relationship with the iconic Stevie Wonder, and when two icons come together, they create magic and memory. So let us know, you and Stevie Wonder have come together yet again, so let us know the project that you're currently working on. Well, currently, I'm, I'm working on Stevie's CD. Stevie is, is notoriously slow doing product because he's... He's so particular about it. every little bar, every little note, every little chord, every little uh, interval, and it's got to be a certain way. He's a perfectionist. But uh, uh, we've been working on a project now for going on a year, okay? That's his secular project. Now, he's also working on a gospel project, as a solo gospel project, which is started before I got with him on this secular project. He's also doing a, uh, a gospel CD uh, that's dedicated to his mother. He's going to call it Gospel Music Inspired by Lula May. Lula May is his mother's name, okay? Okay? And uh, 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 he's going to do it with Big Band. He, he described it all to me. I have a lot to give, see. I'm in the process of com composing. Uh, uh, actually, a symphony based around Motown melodies, okay? So I'm going to combine, uh, I'm going to call it Motown meets the Masters, okay? So look for that. I would, I would wish that uh, mankind could come together and in and, and their humanity as God intended and respect and love and, and nurture and uplift 
And music has the potential to do that, good music. Duke Ellington made a statement. He said, there's good music, then there's all the rest of it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right? Which is a very profound statement when you think about it. And good music, Motown music, classical music, Beethoven, Mozart, other lasts forever because it's from the heart, it's, it's pure. But uh, this other music that's, that's, uh, that's in the air now, a lot of it is underproduced. It is, uh, uh, the, the lyrics don't, uh, they not, aren't endearing. It's affecting our school system. And that's all I wish for is peace among men. And I think we can do it through good music. Is there one song that you consider to be um, maybe a defining song that you would want people to always associate with your name, which has so many profound, powerful achievements? How about Ain't No Mountain High Enough? Listen, baby. Which is a, 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 it's an uplifting song, letting you know that whatever you uh, put your heart into, heart and soul, in the mountain high enough, you can conquer it. Yeah, and life. And that's the truism. All roads lead back to Motown and maybe even post beat with Greg Dunmore. Thanks for watching. Until the next go round. Post beat.